Okay, it just um, I didn't even press the record button and it just automatically started recording, but don't matter. So that being said, hello everyone, welcome back to another review on the channel. I should have done this last night, but uh <laughs> I What did I go do yesterday? Like why can I not remember you know what that I that don't matter. Let's just I would like to make this quick because I have a movie reaction I wanna do later after this. And uh I would like to be in bed by 10.30 because I, I, I can't stay up another night being like, no, I can't stay up late again. <laughs> it's been fun, but sweet baby Jesus, it's, it's taking its toll on me. So with that being said, uh, so yeah, uh, this is my review for, unfortunately, the only season of The Defenders as this is a limited series. Don't know why they didn't make a second season, I'll, I'll say that. And, uh, I kind of wish I did a review for Jessica Jones, Daredevil Season 2, along with Luke Cage and Iron Fist Season 1, but I haven't had the chance to do those, because I did binge-watch those off-camera, and I do have all reaction videos of me watching Defenders Episode 3 to 8, because I just finished watching the show recently, as I just had to wrap this up so I could get back on my binge watch. Like, I should have already finished this, like, two years ago in 2022, but I couldn't because I was in the middle of moving, and, uh, yeah, it just took me, I guess, this long to finally wrap up my reaction series, and now I can watch everything else off camera. Right now, I'm on The Punisher as I'm trying to watch all the shows in timeline order. I'll probably do a video talking about my thoughts on the entire Defender saga as a whole. I know I've only done a review for season one of Daredevil, I'll probably do a season 2 and 3, or just a series review, but I'll tell you this, I'm definitely going to be doing a reaction series for Daredevil Board again once that's out, either later this year or next year, most likely. But yeah, let's just say due to recent set photos of Daredevil, I've just been like, okay, I gotta see season 3, because I haven't seen season 3. Technically, I should just jump right into season 3 right now, but I wanted to watch everything in, like, timeline order, so I got Jessica Jones season 2, then Luke. Then Iron Fist, then Luke Cage, then Daredevil? I, I forgot. I looked up the timeline thing. Still, I'm trying to watch it all in timeline order, but I'm going to try to make this quick, so this shouldn't take too long unless I keep yapping for another 30 minutes, which, how is it I'm always stuck to making 20 to 30 minute videos? But anyways, quick recap. So, a couple years ago, as these were on Netflix at the time, I tried checking them out. The only shows I remember trying to check out while well, only ever watching the first episodes were just uh, The Defenders. I remember watching only one episode, but never got the chance to, like, see what happened next after that. Then, both episode ones of season two and one of Jessica Jones, and the only thing I remember was just uh, some dude stuffing his face in woman's cherries. There's not going to be another scene like that in season two, right? Because I can't remember much other than that. I tried. I've only watched one episode of those, but just still don't. After Daredevil pretty much, well, I would say made his debut, but now that most of the Defender saga is kind of the MCU, once Matt Murdock showed up to help out poor old Spider-Man with uh, his identity being revealed. Still, basically once he showed up in No Way Home, I figured, like, it would be a good time to start watching Daredevil since I had not seen Daredevil. But yeah, I just heard reports about Daredevil popping up in No Way Home, but also Kingpin popping up in Hawkeye. I mean, I've heard about the shows, just never had never had seen them until uh, two years ago, around March, as I started watching them. And I only watched three episodes while I was with my dad, but then got to finish the rest uh, later that year. So I've only seen season one and two of Daredevil Back in 2022, but also Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. Like, I was just on a binge watch on just wanting to just check all of them out. In timeline order, of course. And just to give my quick ratings on all the shows. Yeah, I gave season 1 a 10 out of 10 for Daredevil. Jessica Jones, probably a 9 out of 10 for me. Luke Cage, 8 out of 10. Then Iron Fist. I know not many people enjoyed that, but... Not gonna lie, it was, it was kind of peak. So, 7 out of 10. But Daredevil Season 2, I think, was probably like an 8.5 out of 10. First episodes were pretty good with the Punisher storyline, but then kind of got sidetracked with another storyline that I uh, wasn't too interested in, which involves the hand. And that the hand was also 
in Iron Fist. Yeah, after finishing Iron Fist, uh, at the end of that finale, I was like, Oh, it's go time! It's Defenders time! It's time for them to assemble! And yeah, I've only done reactions for episode 1 and 2 back in October of 2022, but... Like I said, couldn't finish it because I was moving and... Wow, it's taking me this long to finally catch up. And now that I finally watched all eight episodes of Marvel... I was about to say Marvel Studios, but still, it is MCU canon. So yeah, after I finally watched all eight episodes of The Defenders... Uh, yeah, it's got some flaws. But the best part about the show that kind of carries it for me are just Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, and Iron Fist that are just in it. Like, they just kind of carry it for me. I'm gonna say this right off the bat. I am a huge sucker for whenever superheroes from other projects team up. Like, for example, The Avengers. Like... Back then, the early MCU days, I remember just watching solo movies with Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, but once I saw a trailer that Loki was coming back, which I should probably be saying this for a different video, whether it be my Avengers review or like my experience with the MCU, if I'm even going to continue that or do something about that. But no, around that time, uh, I was not only shocked about Loki coming back from the dead because I thought he had died in the Thor movie, but I was shocked to see all other... Marvel superheroes coming together in one movie, I'm like, whoa, 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 what is this? This is, this is a crossover, what? what? What is this? I'm liking this. I, I like this. I want to see this. So yeah, I'm just a big, massive fan of whenever heroes just collide. Basically, just crossovers, if you get what I mean. And yeah, I enjoyed the first Avengers for that, but if anyone gave me everything I ever wanted, which was all heroes coming in one. And, uh, yeah, I'm still waiting for that Avengers 5th and 6th movie. And, unfortunately, uh, the 5th one ain't gonna be titled King Dynasty. So, they could possibly be ditching the King storyline. Which sucks. But, we're still getting Secret Wars. That could possibly be split into parts. I don't know, I've heard rumors about that. But, still though, with Defenders, yeah, this is pretty much Netflix's Avengers team up. Even though they're not on Netflix anymore and are now on Disney+. Plus. And, just seeing all four of them... In this show, I, I just enjoyed the interactions. Just, they just honestly carry the show. Now, the only flaws or nitpicks, negatives I have, just mainly one thing, or possibly two. I don't know. Uh, possibly, possibly two or three negatives I have for this show. I want to say this sometimes has pacing issues, but I'm not too sure about that. I'm still trying to figure out about the whole pacing issue thing, but... Really, my biggest negative I got is just uh, the whole hand storyline. I'm not, I'm, I, I don't give two about it. I mean, I know they're supposed to be threatening and all, but just, I don't know. Just, there's just something I, that I'm like, yeah, no, uh, they're not like, basically the hand is just not like, let's just say a top tier villain or whatever. Just, it's just, I, I don't know how to explain it. And then that I'm not too interested with the whole hand storyline. I do like one of the actors that is playing the villain, which would be... Okay, I forgot her name, but I know she was in Ghostbusters, but also in the Alien movies. But no, I, I like the actress, but wasn't digging much of her villain for me personally. I don't know. It could be just me, but... Honestly, though, just, I'm not into the whole hand storyline. Yeah, that was pretty much the main villain of the series, but... I'm just not, I, I don't know, all I can say is that I just wasn't too interested in the storyline. Like, they just weren't great villains to me. But what I was more invested in was just the interactions we were having between, uh, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage. And they don't, like, meet up entirely until, like, the la like, the third episode, mainly. I mean... Some of them meet up in the second episode, but they fully come together by the third episode once they start kicking ass with a bunch of henchmen at that circle building, whatever it was called. And I guess another small nip, well, my biggest nitpick is just the whole hand storyline. I just wasn't too invested in that, but a little nitpick I have is just when Foggy and Karen are kind of bugging about Matt how he's got to stop being a vigilante. Yeah, I'll admit, I was a bit annoyed about that. And I don't know, I'm back and forth on if this character from Iron Fist was sidelined or not. I mean, she pretty much has a lot to shine in, like, the last few episodes, especially when she comes face-to-face -face with who I thought died in Iron Fist, but clearly did not, and it's... I don't even remember the guy's name, but he is part of the... One of, he is part of the hand. Like, there's five members of the hand there that are called Fingers, and, uh... One of them was killed by Elektra, which 
Uh, by the way, while I was watching episode 6, there are three things I saw coming a mile away as I was like, I freaking called it. One, I knew that Iron Fist was going to get captured. And two, I knew that Stick was going to get killed. I mean, yeah, I, that I, I saw coming a mile away mainly. But for three, I had a feeling something was going to happen with uh, Alexandra. And uh, I was kind of right, but I was not expecting... Uh, Electra just to straight up murder her, which that I, that uh, that I I I saw I didn't saw that coming, but I also kind of saw that coming at the same time. It's it's in between, I guess. But yeah, Alexander would be one of them, and then there's another dude that I forgot his I forgot most of these folks' names. I mean, I know there's the old lady that apparently has superpowers who's been popping up in Daredevil season one. I don't know. No, she was definitely in Daredevil season two, but she was also in Iron Fist. But uh, yeah. I recognize, like, at least two characters from other Marvel shows. Uh, one of them is just a dude that speaks Japanese. And then there's another one that, uh, was killed by Stick once he got his head chopped off. But yeah, just the five members, one of them would be the old lady from Daredevil Season 1 and 2, along with Iron Fist. And then, uh, that dude that is related to the love interest of Iron Fist. Sorry, I cannot remember her name at the moment. But yeah, he was, uh... He was one of the members, and then there's Alexander. Then, uh, just two random characters that just were, that just popped up in this season. And I did dug, uh, some of the action sequences in this series, but I also, I, I think the last two episodes were probably the most fun episodes. I mean, I enjoyed some of these episodes. I did rate each one on Letterboxd, so you could probably check them out. I, actually, I'll probably put, like, a, uh, slideshow at the end. What's the intro? Which, by the way, I have been listening to that intro recently because it's just music to my ears as I've become as obsessed with it. But I could get a copyright claim. Which I'm almost like, yeah, I'll, I'm almost like going to get a copyright claim. But yeah, the last two episodes were pretty much just, I'd say, a two-parter finale. Uh, the last, the ending of episode seven had left me shocked when, like, here's something I was having trouble trying to understand why the hand, like, what the hand wanted to do with New York City. What, like, what war is it? I'll admit there are some anticlimactic moments, not entirely, just a few bits here and there, but the ending of episode 7 left me shocked as, oh, so that's what they're after, as apparently there's been a dead dragon that's in a skeleton form just chilling in the bottom of New York City, and basically that's like the only thing that's going to keep them alive as they want immortality, as these folks are bad. Just straight up evil and stuff. But once they just collect the, I guess, the all bones or whatever, New York City just crumbles. I don't know what else to say about that. And I probably was expecting, like, a big, huge, big fight. Like, similar with the final battle of New York City from the Avengers, but... It's all taken down underground, which... Not gonna lie, I'm not too much of a fan of how the underground looks like. It looks like a construction site. Well, I mean, there's construction going on, but I don't know. I, I would prefer if it looked more cave-like instead of... Con I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I did dug the final battle with the Defenders, but also with Elektra and Daredevil, which, by the way, I don't know if Elektra is dead, which they could try to bring her back in the MCU. I don't know. I mean, I was... Wondering what was gonna happen with Elektra after this season, but there's one thing I saw coming a mile away and like, oh, I freaking know. Just, just before going into watching Defenders, I knew something was gonna happen with Daredevil that probably would have affected season three. And, uh, there's like a fake death scene with him at the end. Like, basically, uh, Karen Foggy thought, well, everyone else thought that, yeah, he basically died down there, but really, he did not. I'm hoping we get an explanation to how the hell he got out of there in season three, but I don't know. I I've not seen clips of spoilers, but well, I've seen little bits of spoilers. Not like I've watched the clips, but like I know some bits about season three just out of context. Like uh, Bullseye is apparently becoming Daredevil, basically being an imposter of Daredevil. So like I'm just eager just to watch season three right now, but I gotta watch three other seasons. Just to get to season three first after the Punisher, but I I knew this would have been a fact. I knew this was gonna like at some point connect to season three of Daredevil. Man, I'll say this: there are some flaws here and there of the show, but really, what carries it for me is just these four uh, vigilantes that are teamed up to fight uh, an evil organization 
while also stopping a war that they've been going at each other for the past couple of years or something. I, I don't freaking know, but it's honestly cool seeing all the side characters from all the Marvel shows come together. And I would like to say that uh, Claire is like the Nick Fury of the Defenders, since she has pretty much been in all four Marvel shows. And has interacted with each of them, even though she didn't bring them. I don't know, I just like to imagine that, but technically she didn't like bring them all to there. She just knows all four of them. But no, it's honestly cool just seeing the side characters interact with each other a bit. Mainly around like the last episodes when uh, they try to get their loved ones at the police station so that the hand don't get their hands on them and kill them. But here's what I don't get. Like, why did they make this a limited series? They could have made another season after like down the line or something, I don't know, just, I don't get why they made this a limited series, because we could have had, like, at least three or four seasons of The Defenders, but here's what I want, having to finish watching The Defenders, I want to see these guys team up again in the MCU, and I'm fine if they can maybe give us another season, but honestly, I would prefer a freaking movie now, what could they do? I don't know, I guess, I, I mean, I don't know much about The Defenders, as I've not read Marvel comics. I'm I am a Marvel fan, just just only by the movies and TV shows. I I like I was born in two thousand six. I well I could have gotten comics around when I like I don't know. I do plan on getting comics for research for like future MCU projects. Like for example, once Daredevil Board again comes around I'm gonna try to get a comic that has the title Daredevil Board again. Even though most of these projects are are based off of the Marvel comics, but apparently Kevin Feige is telling all these directors and writers to not read the comics. I'll say this, James Gunn is probably going to do a better job with that as he's going to have all the, his directors and writers read the comics. You know, for source material and stuff. But yeah, all I ask for Marvel is that we see these guys again in an MCU movie. And hell, bring in the freaking Punisher, because he, like... I mean, I don't know if he's, if he's, like, part of the Defenders as well in, like, comics or something, but bring me a street-level movie with Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and The Punisher. Just, I want to see a movie with all five of them just doing street-level stuff. It doesn't have to be part of the multiverse saga, although I would like to see Daredevil team up with the Avengers in Avengers 5 and 6. But still, I want to see these guys again team up, because after having to watch all four of these shows... I've grown attached to these guys and enjoyed their interactions with each other and the Defenders. But for my rating on the Defenders, it would be a 7.5 out of 10. But like I said earlier, since I've watched four different Marvel shows that were leading up to the Defenders, it's an 8 out of 10 for me, mainly because I enjoyed seeing all four of them interact with each other because I just happen to be a huge sucker when heroes just come together. Something similar like Tales of Rocket, for example, when uh, Troll Hunters, Three Below, and Wizards all come together for one movie that's sadly disappointing but still you get the idea well that being said those are just my quick thoughts on the defenders that is that was streaming on netflix but now is on disney plus along with all their other shows like daredevil luke cage jessica jones and iron fist and the punisher even though he wasn't in the defenders but actually another thing i probably would have not made any sense for him to pop up in here because like if you were trying to kill a a member of the hand, you would need to literally cut off their heads. And guns ain't gonna do it because they're because most of these folks are already dead. But uh yeah, I will try to review other Marvel Netflix shows like Jessica Jones, Daredevil, Season 2 and 3, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and along with the Punisher. So yeah, those are just my thoughts on the Defenders, but as always, I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace out.